And the legacy of Tom Osborne. Here we go. There, ooh. Another <laughs> bath added to that legacy. And a hug from Jason Peter. And you can say fitting that it would end with a victory and perhaps a national championship for Tom Osborne. He leaves us with All the fans go crazy, and the team gives Coach Tom a final victory. We're live from the Orange Bowl and Lincoln tonight. Big plays, big scoring, and certainly a big victory for the Nebraska Huskers. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being with us. What a win. The Huskers 42, the Volunteers 17. It was all turned around in the second half. Third quarter rushing, 229 yards by the Huskers. Second half rushing, more than 340 yards. Amon Green, the offensive player of the game, what a, he set a uh, Orange Bowl rushing record for 206 yards. The action is at Pro Players Stadium in South Florida, so let's not wait. Let's go live to Scott Kilberry on the sidelines tonight. Scott? Thanks a lot, Bill. Who wouldn't have thought it, but we knew that it would happen. Here we have the second-ranked Cornhuskers. Could they be number one? Your read on the game. I mean, after such a convincing win, Michigan's lackluster victory yesterday, you, what do you think? Well, I think it's going to be a tough choice. You know, the voters really have to do, have to go to sleep tonight and have a lot of thinking because that's a nice performance. How can you deny Nebraska being number one also? You talk about the performance at halftime. Who would have thought that Scott Frost would be out throwing Peyton Manning and then Tennessee would be out rushing Nebraska? But, of course, like you said, things turned around in the second half. And, of course, Amon Green, he caught fire. Oh, yeah, Amon Green came out big tonight. Um, he started off slow, but once... Coach Osborne made adjustments with the offensive line. It was all of mine tonight. Now, as far as the second half, Coach, you think the players just thought in the back of their minds this could be our last game as far as the 23 seniors and then for Tom Osborne. You think the emotions helped kind of give them the outlast uh, Tennessee there? Well, they knew in the first half that they could play better. You know, they cut the turnovers here late in the first half, turn, um, mistakes here, mistakes there. But I figured that after halftime, caught by Coach Osborne, the players really just came out and ran old-fashioned Nebraska football, pounded down the throat. Now, you talk about old-fashioned Nebraska football. In the first half, we saw a little mixing things up. In fact, we saw four consecutive passes in the first half. They're introducing some plays we haven't even seen all season long. Your read on that, Well, play. you know, it, it's that time of season where you have a month to work on something, and, of course, a team is going to put in some new wrinkles, and that's what Coach Osborne did. Tennessee never really saw half the plays with Coach Osborne right after, after halftime. Like I said, Coach Osborne and the coach staff did a great job in coaching these guys. Now, as far as introducing that scheme with the passing coming out there, obviously it took Tennessee see kind of off guard in the second half. Okay. Yes, when you look at Nebraska film, most of y'all, you saw them come out and run the ball 75% of the time. But tonight, I think it kind of surprised them because they came out throwing the ball, and Tennessee wasn't really prepared for it. Now, we'll have an opportunity to talk to some of the players during the cooling off period as we speak. Some are in the press conference. We're going to have some more coming out on the field. In the meantime, Bill, back to the studio. Hey, Scott and Tommy, in the second half when the team came out, was there a different look in their eyes? Because they really took it to them in the second half. Well, I, I, there was a different look, a different look to say, hey, they wasn't satisfied with the way they played in the first half. You know, offensively rushing the ball, they knew they could do better. And defensively did a good job, but they still gave it some big plays here and there. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, definitely, when they're going into the locker room, you sense that it wasn't enough. The players wanted more. They come back out. They were even more focused, I believe. And you can see, like you said, the look in their eyes. Well, that focus took them right to the end zone on the first drive. And uh, it seemed like every drive after that, except when they had that fumble and that bobble in the fourth quarter. We'll get back to you guys live in Miami in just a moment for those players inter player interviews. Meantime, tonight's big win, 42-17, to 17, has downtown Lincoln hopping tonight. 10-11's Doug Walker is live downtown in the thick of it. Doug, are you there? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm in the thick of it, Bill. Thousands of fans are down here screaming in celebration of the win tonight. They are all over the streets. Fans are tapping the streets. The crowd is up and the After the win, fans just absolutely flooded the streets. We've got some video of people in the no doubt Nebraska fans are proud of their hustle. There's thousands of people that were pulling into the streets, reminiscent of the first national title night. Well, Doug, what a night. Well, you know, it's been a great night for Nebraska fans. Uh, you know, they have been playing well. They've 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 been You can 
see that people are absolutely thinking we're number one. Right now, we're going to go back to Luke Stuckmeyer, who's standing by live in the studio. Luke killed Luke, things are a little more tough back there. Well, Doug, I'm here with uh, Eric Stokes, former Husker. It's a little more calm here in the studio right now. And uh, Eric, it was a great game. I didn't know if the Huskers could win that big, but boy, they really poured it on. Yeah, they really did. I mean, uh, coaching adjustments at halftime uh, was the big difference in the ball game. And uh, the guys just came out, you know, like they say, with a whole new focus. And um, it really uh, made a big difference in the ball game. Came out, established the run, and uh, ran the whole time. Basically, didn't even need to pass. And uh, that was definitely the difference in the ball game. Let's take a look at some of those first quarter highlights. The Oscars come out of the tunnel and uh, what, what's that kind of like? I mean, it's, it's a pretty good feeling, I would imagine. Yeah, it's a, it's a real good feeling. I know the guys are really fired up this being uh, Coach Osborne's last game. And uh, I know that they're ready to get, uh, go out and give tremendous effort this evening. Okay, we go to the first possession here. Uh, Tennessee takes a pitch. They, they really didn't run, uh, pass the ball deep at first. Yeah, I was surprised that they didn't try to throw deep, you know, even the first play of the game. I thought they would, but uh, they didn't. They, they stayed pretty conservative. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Miami while the action's still hot there. We're going to take a look at the rest of these first quarter highlights in just a little bit, and certainly the Huskers uh, start to really develop their game plan in the second quarter. Right, definitely. Um, that was, you know, a turning point. Um, I was actually a little worried because they weren't really running the ball uh, that strong in that uh, first half, and yet they really weren't stopping Tennessee's run. But uh, all that turned around uh, when they came out of that tunnel to start the third quarter. Boy, it sure did. We're going to toss it back now live to Miami. Scott Kilber is there with one of Eric's former teammates, Tommy Frazier. Guys. Well, I'll tell you what, Luke. Standing next to us isn't quite Coach Tom Osborne. Next best thing, his son, Mike. Now, you were there the whole time on the sidelines, and, of course, you caught it on your uh, special handy cam there. Your feelings, in a nutshell, for your father? Well, it's a happy, sad deal. You know, it's been a long 25 years and a short 25 years. We're happy he's getting to move on and do some things that are really important to him, things that will probably be uh, centered around his faith. Uh, but he's also sad because there's parts of it that he'll miss, the players and the X's and O's he'll really miss. Now, like the players yourself there on the sidelines with your father, a special moment to share with him. Well, I didn't really talk to him at all, <laughs> but uh, I saw him just a minute ago and I told him congratulations. He was hugging all the players and they were kind of misty eyed and it was a great moment in the locker room. Okay, thank you, Mike. I'll you give bet. you an opportunity now to join your father. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Now, Tom, you got a special guest over there of your own. Yeah, I'm here with the governor, Governor Ben Nelson. I just have a few, um, give me some of your thoughts on the game tonight first. Well, I, I think Nebraska played as well on both sides of the ball as, as we could have ever expected them to, and certainly uh, they, we deserve to win this game in a big way tonight. And and I I just don't I don't see how even in the case of Michigan uh, voting for number one that even Bo Schembechler can vote Michigan number one over Nebraska this this season. Uh, I think it, at the very least it's a shared national championship. And when you compare the scores, Nebraska really uh, was a class of the field. Yeah, you're right there. Um, Coming into the game, you know, everyone knew this was Coach Osborne last game. His emotions are going to be high. How did, did you talk to him before the game? I didn't get a chance to talk to him before the game, but uh, I suspect we'll do a little hunting and a little fishing after the season's over. Uh, he'll have a little bit more time, and uh, who, who knows, maybe I'll have a little bit more time. Certainly in 1999, I'm going to have enough, enough time. <laughs> All right, that's, appreciate that. Good to see you guys. You bet. Now back to Bill. Well, yeah, well, one last question, oh, Governor. Sure. You have uh, the likes of Coach Tom Osborne representing the state of Nebraska. You, could you ask for a better uh, diplomat? Oh, no. Uh, we've got uh, Warren Buffett doing it on the financial side. <laughs> and, and when it comes, not to take anything away from Warren, but when it comes to the human side and the personal side, Tom Osborne's a great spokesman. He's a great representative of Nebraska and a great Nebraska. You're right. You couldn't ask for a better representative. Now, Bill and Luke, I know you guys are back in the studio. You have an additional reads on the uh, game as we wait for some additional players to come out on the field. We need the governor on that uh, AP Riders voting <laughs> poll and with the, uh, you know, everybody else who's going to vote for number one, don't we? That's right. That's right. We certainly do. They're <laughs> saying that we need you on the Riders poll with that AP guys uh, who are voting. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when you look back at that Washington State-Michigan game yesterday, uh, those, those refs uh, and the timekeeper, the, really there were some things, strange things that happened there at the last two seconds. I'm just glad that the timekeeper isn't keeping time on us and we'd be twice as old as we are. <laughs> That's the fastest two seconds I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot of Nebraska fans out there who agree, and just impartial fans as well. But as far as we're thinking right now, uh, the read on the game, an incredible game, like 42 to 17 is the final score. In fact, we look up at the uh, big screen right now, still in the middle of the uh, press conference, Coach Tom Osborne. He's uh, flocked by many of his players, and many of his players, like his son were say was saying, are a little misty-eyed because what else can you say? An end of an incredible coaching era that spanned a quarter of a century as a head coach in 36 years with the Nebraska football team. Luke? 
Bill? Okay, Scott, you know what? It, it is icing on the cake. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. Now, let it, let's go over to Luke Stuckmeyer and Eric Stokes for that first quarter analysis. Fellas? Well, it was an exciting quarter, Eric, and it started off right away with Tennessee, as we mentioned, not really doing what we thought they were going to do. We thought they'd go deep on them, but they didn't. No, they didn't. Uh, they tried to nickel and dime their way down the field, and like I said, uh, they weren't going to be able to do that, and, uh, and they didn't. They didn't have the patience, uh, you know, with their offense, and they just kind of they just stumbled uh, throughout the game. They really never got into a rhythm. Uh, you see Jay Foreman there making a nice tackle, and they just didn't have any rhythm in their offense all evening. Now, this was a big punt, 78-yard punt, and uh, field position wasn't really going great for the Huskers at the start of this game. No, it wasn't. I, uh, I know that's a big part of Nebraska's offense is uh, field position, and uh, they did. That's partially why they struggled running the ball um, early on in the game, because they just didn't have the field position that they needed in order to run the, the offense. And you don't want to be throwing on third down when everybody knows you're going to be throwing on third down there either. Definitely not. Now we get Peyton Manning here. He goes back for another pass. And we get Irwin Sweeney. He had some big plays in the first quarter. You mentioned uh, they, they really tested Irwin. Yeah, they did. They tested him early, but, uh, you know, he, he rose to the challenge. And uh, after that, they really didn't try to challenge him uh, deep anymore the rest of the game. So, uh, you know, our corners, uh, Ralph Brown, obviously caused a fumble later on. And uh, Sweeney played really well. Now, the Huskers uh, get a big play here, and this is uh, one of your former teammates. Yeah, Ralph, uh, he's, he's a great hitter, and uh, he came up, made a tremendous hit on the uh, running back, Lewis, there, and uh, Rutgers there to recover the fumble, and a uh, big turning point uh, in the game there. What, what, does, what does Ralph do? He's just trying to make the tackle. He's really not going for the fumble there. No, uh, it's a run support uh, defense, uh, primarily, uh, primarily for the corners, and uh, he just made an aggressive play and uh, caused the fumble. And then the Huskers go right back to the pass. We thought they'd run the ball, but they do some play-action stuff. Yeah, I think uh, Tennessee, they were, they were not prepared to handle a Nebraska's play-action pass. Uh, they were, had so much focus on stopping Nebraska's run that they completely forgot um, about how, how well Nebraska does with counter play action pass plays. And then we get a couple of new wrinkles here on the offense. Coach Osborne uh, pulling out all the tricks. Yeah, uh, kind of like what Tommy said, uh, I know the offense, they, they hide a lot of plays. They probably had those plays in since the middle of the season, but Coach Osborne uh, will save them, and uh, he knows when to call them. Okay, 7 to nothing after one quarter of play. We're going to be right back with uh, more action from Miami. We'll be talking to Bill Byrne and a couple of more Huskers when we come back. You gotta surround yourself with talented people, stay focused, and work hard. Norwest salutes Tom Osborne's 25 years of winning with Tom's Loan Challenge. Take the challenge by applying for any new Norwest loan of $5,000 or more. If you qualify, you'll get a free commemorative jacket or flag. It's nice to know Norwest is as proud as I am to be part of Nebraska. Nebraska can Welcome back, everyone. What a win, 42 to 17, and no time to waste. Let's check in with Scott Kilberry at Pro Player Stadium. Scott's standing by with Athletic Director Bill Byrne and Coach Ron Brown. Scott? That's right. Here's Athletic Director Bill Byrne. Now, what can you say? Kind of a bittersweet end. You have a great finish to an incredible, remarkable, remarkable career with Coach Tom Osborne, but I hate to see it end. Well, you hate to see Tom's career end. But, you know, the one thing that, that uh, he has set such a stage and in listening to him talk to the athletes after the game, he reminded them about the future, about the future of Nebraska, and that the program is such that we need to continue this, and the underclassmen who are coming back next year need to continue this wonderful tradition we have here at Nebraska. And I think that will be the legacy of Tom Osborne, not only the 25 years where he was our head coach, but the foundation he's built for our, for our future. I think that's what is people are going to really be proud of Tom and the great program he's built here. Tommy, what do you think of that? Well, I think it, it is a bit of sweet ending, but you know, like they say, good things have to come to an end. And, yeah. and the, the future starts now. Coach Tillich is going to have to go out there and do the best that he can to keep, keep the team to where they are now. Yeah, he'll do a great job. Now, you talked about Coach Solich uh, coming into the picture now. You had a decision there. Was it even a hard one for you? No. I mean, that there was there was no doubt who our new football coach was going to be. I, I mean, what we wanted to do was continue, con continue this tradition. And we needed someone who understood our culture, who understood what it took to win at Nebraska, because this is a unique place. I and mean, we, we do things a little bit differently here. And you need someone who understands that. And that's why selecting uh, the, the, the next football coach was just no problem. Frank was going to be the guy. Now, with uh, assistant coaches that have stuck around for many years, you have another one here, Coach Ron Brown, a receiver coach uh, with the uh, program. Now, it's, it's assistant coaches like this that stick around that make the program that much better. Ron, I mean, your read on the game and just seeing that uh, 
this uh, an incredible career coming to an end like we were talking to Mr. Byrne here, it's kind of a bittersweet uh, finish. Well, we're going to miss Tom. There's no question about it. Uh, not only as a coach, but just, just as a man. I mean, the guy is really a uh, very sensitive human being and uh, just a, a great person to be around. But uh, life moves on, and I'm looking forward to the next chapter in everyone's life. His life, I think, is going to move on in a, in a very positive way. I think God's got great plans for him. Uh, he's not only a great coach, he's a great man. So his, his, his thing won't stop. And, uh, and I really believe the same thing about our football team. Uh, Frank Solich has been around a long time. He's going to do a great job. Uh, he'll be supported by us very well, and I, uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Now, as far as uh, the future, the future is now as far as this game is concerned, and you really got a mix of those receivers in there this time, and you caught uh, Tennessee by surprise. Well, we were able to do a lot of things. You know, we uh, we heard them early with the, in the passing game, uh, play action passes. They were sniffing around the line of scrimmage, their defensive backs, et cetera. And Tommy can tell you that uh, the uh, just the idea of um, uh, you know ten, nine, ten guys up around the line of scrimmage, you got to open things up a little bit. So we were able to do that soften things up. We got in that double wing set, ran some option football uh, with Chevin and, uh, and Bobby. And again, that opened things up as we got into the second and third and fourth quarters with the inside running game, particularly to the eye back. That, that cut back draw play was a, uh, was, a, was a killer for him. Kids really blocked hard all night long and uh, made some big plays. They certainly did. And what a big game it is. In fact, number two, Nebraska may just very well be number one. We'll soon find out when the voters tally all of those votes out there. Luke, what do you think? Well, I think it was just a great game plan by the Huskers and certainly just a better team today on the field. But the big thing, I think, Scott, had to be the fact that there, there were just a lot of turnovers at the game, something that Tennessee did in the SEC Championship. They had six turnovers in the SEC Championship, and luckily the Huskers keep that rolling again today. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was crucial for them. I mean, those three turnovers were, were basically the difference in the ball game because Nebraska really hadn't done a lot in that first half, but those three turnovers allowed them to get confidence, gave Tennessee a whole lot of doubt and uh, basically just propelled the Huskers on to another win. Well, let's take a look at some of those second quarter highlights. We start right off with one of those big turnovers. Terry Fair coming up on the muff punt here from Jesse Cush. We get the muff punt and Lance Brown recovers it. I didn't know the rule here. I thought yeah. it was a touchdown. I didn't know the rule either. I thought uh, that this would be a touchdown, but I guess in college, uh, the, you know, the ball is uh, down there. You can't pull it, uh, the ball. So, uh, you know, unfortunate thing, but, uh, you know, Nebraska, they capitalize on it. And, and go on, so. Tennessee 90th in the nation in turnover ratio. That is not good. And then we get Shevin Wiggins on that same pitch play. Yeah, that's that uh, new option there that they ran. And Tennessee didn't have any idea um, how to defend it, and uh, we get seven points. Okay, now we, we're going to see the Huskers uh, finally starting to get some stuff going here on defense. Some short passes underneath by Tennessee. Still, they're not going long here. Right. Uh, you know, Nebraska, they kept everything in front and, and you know, really conservative with their defense. And then uh, we get the uh, field goal here. That made it 14-3. to And the Huskers go and take that 14-3 to lead into halftime. And right now, Eric, we have another one of your former teammates. We have Amon Green joining Scott Kilberry live out in Miami. Guys, you have Amon for us. We certainly do have Amon. You're read right away, Tommy. This guy had a great game. Yeah, he did have a great game. You know, Amon, everyone wants to know out there, well, what did you do different? Or did you prepare yourself any different for this game? Mm. I say no because I've been preparing myself like I did all season long. You know, just mentally, just like just run the ball, have fun with it out there, and that's what I did. You know, O line, they stepped it up another notch, opening some, opened up some huge holes for us back there, and just pounded it to them all game. Yeah, it looked in the, in the first half that they all defense front seven was really aggressive. What did Coach Osborne do differently at the halftime? He made adjustments of running right at him. We was running on a lot of outside, you know from 11 walls, 19 um, walls, and stuff like that. So he was like, we just pounded to him with 47 dives, 40, 32 traps, and then wear him out come third, fourth quarter. Speaking of Coach Osborne, this has been his last game. How special was it for you to go out and perform well and send him out as a winner? Um, it's just something I can't really put into words. I mean, it's just something. I know that going into this game, this will be the last game. I got to give it all I got, just leave it out on that field. I mean, if I had to just we do whatever to get it, get the ball in the end zone down the field to win that game. I was going to do that. Now, a question that everybody wants to know, you saw Coach Osborne in his last game. Did we see Amon Green in his last game as a Husker? Or? Uh, I don't know yet. I'll give it a couple of days, think about it, and let everybody know. i say next week, about Wednesday, Tuesday, or whatever. All right, we appreciate that. No problem. All right, great game, Amon. Great game. He even got himself a trophy, a little mini trophy here. Take a look at this one if we get a look at that one. Definitely worthy of the, of the most valuable player in that. Yeah. 206 yards, a new Orange Bowl record, and he definitely poured it on in the second half. Luke, what's your read on this? 
Well, I just think uh, Mon had a good game, and they just take over in the second half. The Huskers really start to dominate this game. We've got a whole lot more coming up in this second uh, segment here, this next segment of our post-game show as we continue live from Miami and here in Lincoln. The Huskers win big, 42-17. to 17. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the post-game show. Huskers win 42-17. to 17. Maybe a shot at number one. Uh, Eric Stokes, uh, Seattle Seahawks safety and former Husker. Eric, first of all, do you think uh, they did enough to get number one? I definitely think they did enough to be number one. Um, I thought all along that if they, when they had won the game, uh, probably like 21 points, that they'd be the number one team. And uh, they went out and just had a, a dominant performance and uh, definitely deserved to be number one. Third quarter, we see that the Huskers decide they are going to run the ball. What's Coach Osborne like in that halftime speech? At halftime, I'm, I'm sure Coach Osborne, you know, like Amon said, said, look, we're going to run the ball and uh, we're going to make them prove us, you know, that they can stop it. And if they don't, we'll just keep on running it down their throats. And that's a exactly what they did to start the half off. Trying to make a goal line stance here and you don't stand a chance against that line. Now, fourth and inches that you can basically, uh, you know, give it to them. So we're up 21 to three at that point. And then the defense finally gets the first hit on Peyton Manning here. Yeah, what they did was they ran a, a twist stunt down at the bottom there with uh, Jason Peter and Mike Rutger and uh, it came, opened wide open, and Rutgers came in, got a sack on uh, Peyton Manning. And then we go back to the run again, and it's Amon, and uh, 100 yards in every game except for Akron this year, 206 tonight. Just yeah, he just had a tremendous performance, and you can see the wide receivers downfield blocking. I mean, that's, that's option football, you know, Nebraska style right there. And then we get Scott putting us up here. 28 to 3, the Huskers go up. He had some cramps. That's not an easy thing to play for either. No, it wasn't, but, uh, you know, they, they seemed to be pretty minor, and he handled it well. And then we get Peyton Manning here. He starts to feel the pressure in the second half even more. He's, he's throwing off the back foot. Yeah, at this point, uh, Manning was really getting frustrated. And, uh, you know, they had really gotten his head. And, you know, they're, like I said, their office had no rhythm. And, uh, and Amon, just the third quarter was unbelievable rushing the football. Yeah, he was uh, amazing. And, uh, you know, that's basically what he's been doing his whole career at Nebraska. And, uh, you know, he's just a tremendous athlete. And he'll be a tremendous player at the next level. And, and really, when you look at Amon run the ball, He's been breaking tackles like that all year round. He gets the touchdown there, and the Huskers have the big lead, 35-9 to after three quarters of play. We'll take a look at those fourth quarter highlights in just a little bit. But we're going to toss it downtown to Chris Hunt. 10-11's Chris Hunt is down there, and there's all kinds of excitement down there. Chris, are you surviving? As the game begins, hundreds gather at Guitars and Cadillacs they just want to be around other Husker fans. To drink beer, have fun, and watch the number one Huskers beat the Tennessee Volunteers. We're going to watch the Huskers kick Tennessee's butt. You can follow the game by the crowd's reaction when Nebraska does well. And you can see the expressions change as a Tennessee drive ends in a fumble. It's a rowdy night. Radio station Froggy 98 pumps them up. It's even a party for the few Michigan fans on hand, although Nebraska fans keep on them. Uh, a lot of grief from everyone in the whole city. At halftime, it's dance time. And in the second half, even Scott Frost's old high school classmates are in on the celebration. Let's go, Jared Lambert of Wood River played football with Scott Frost in high school, and he hopes tonight's game will help Scott Frost earn a lasting place in the memory of Husker fans. He's got a lot to prove to a lot of Nebraska fans that early in the season said he couldn't get it done. I think tonight he's showing he can do it. Scott Frost showed everyone tonight that he certainly could do it. Chris Hunt is down there, guitars and Cadillacs are somewhere as far as we know. He's okay, but we just couldn't hear him for right now. You know what the Huskers did, what they do to everyone. They simply wore them down and then pulverized them right into the ground. Let's go back to the action. Man, Miami, really? Florida. Scott Kilbury standing by with Mr. Excitement, Bobby Newcomb. Bobby Newcomb, that's right. The true freshman. Kind of some mixed emotions for you. I mean, you come to Nebraska your first year, and next thing you know, uh, T.O. is retiring. Your thoughts? Well, you know, Coach Osborne's is the you know, greatest coach in, in college football, and I just wanted the opportunity to play for him. Tom, All right, what do you think? first big bowl game. How did you feel out there? Well, at first I felt real nervous because I've been waiting for this this moment since I was a real young kid, and then to have it be Coach Osborne's last game and a game that's gonna go down in history it just made the nerves fly even more. You know, sitting, I was sitting up in the stands watching the game, and all I can hear is 
get Bobby Newcomb the ball, do you think that every time that you touch the ball that you're going to make something happen? Um, I believe that every time I touch the ball, I'm going to try to make everything, something happen and, you know, just get the opportunity to do something. Like, um, like we said earlier, you know, Coach Charles won last game. Personally, how does that affect you? Um, a lot of emotions running me because, you know, he's one of the biggest reasons I came here. And, and um, just to have him leave is, I'm, I'm just happy I got an opportunity to play under him for a year. And Coach Charles is going to do a great job the next few years. Now, as far as uh, an underclassman that we were talking about, as a football player, you're going to all these bowl games, especially at Nebraska. You don't spend much time home with the holidays. Was it tough for your first year being away from home? I was a little tough, but I had my little 800 number that I can call when they to collect. <laughs> <laughs> Run up my dad's phone bill a little bit. <laughs> now, I know that folks back in uh, Nebraska are really excited about this and a little mayhem in the streets, but it's deservedly so. Who knows? They could just very well be number one come tomorrow. You think you guys should be number one? Uh, I definitely think we, have a, we should have a you know, shot at number one. I think uh, everybody else out there agrees. Bill, what do you think? Oh, absolutely, Scott. There's no question. Uh, tell me, would you ask Bobby for me, what, uh, what's in his future as a Husker? Is he going to continue in the wingback position and uh, punt returning, or is he going to take over the reins as quarterback sometime in the not-so-distant future? Well, we're in the studio, Eric, and we're talking with Eric Stokes in the studio, and he wants to know that your, what's your train of thought next year? Do you want to stay at wingback, or do you want to have your, your fair shot at quarterback? Well, I've really enjoyed playing wingback this year, and it's, you know, had me, helped me gain a lot of experience playing and, you know, game experience, and, and um, I think that's a decision up to the coaches, whether they want me to play wingback or stay at quarterback, you know, whatever's going to help the team out the most. Is there any preference, though? Um, I'm sure there's a little preference inside of me. You know, Tommy Frazier had his preference when he was here, so. Following in the footsteps of uh, Tommy you know what, Frazier. You know what can I say? You know, you want to follow in the footsteps of greatness. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of greatness, I think we have something like that or close to it back in the studio. Is there? Oh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, fellas, we're going to get back in touch with you guys in just a moment, and we will have post-game from Coach Tom Osborne. We'll get his thoughts on his final game after 25 years at the helm. Right now, let's take a break. We'll be right back. This is Charlie McBride. When I'm recruiting, I look for players that are strong, durable, and ready to tackle the tough jobs day in and day out. Those are the same qualities I wanted in a pickup truck, and that's why I bought an F-150 from Anderson Ford. I found the model, options, and price I wanted, plus the service I'll need for years to come. Whether you're looking for a truck, car, or minivan, do what I did. Go with the winning team at Anderson Ford. Anderson Ford in Lincoln and Grand Island. You just feel better when you're working with number one. It is a perfect end to a perfect season for Coach Tom Osborne. Here's what the coach had to say after today's 64th annual Orange Bowl. Team, I thought that, uh, you know, starting uh, last January, uh, this was one of the most focused uh, group of players I've ever been around. They, uh, they knew exactly where they wanted to be this January 2nd, and the reason we were here was not by accident. Uh, some of the guys here, uh, a lot of the guys in that locker room, uh, you know, made a commitment to, to get here. They worked very hard in the offseason, and they worked very hard this fall. So they've done all they can. You know, we, we can't do any more than win 13, and uh, very proud of them, and uh, we'll just let the chips fall where they may as far as the rest of it goes. Uh, so uh, uh, a great way to, to end uh, 25 enjoyable years. There been a few bumps along the road, but uh, can't think of a better way to go out and uh, I just hope for the guys coming back next year that they, they keep the program rolling and that Frank Solich has every, uh, every opportunity that I've had. Uh, he has a great staff, great tradition, great fans, and uh, so uh, a lot of things working for us uh, right now at Nebraska, and I'm glad that that can continue. Uh, again, I don't have much more to say. I uh, just uh, uh, really care about these guys. Uh, really, uh, really uh, am, am grateful the kind of people they are, the kind of effort they've given us, and the kind of relationship that I've had with them. And uh, the uh, uh, one thing that will be very difficult in uh, leaving coaching will be uh, the relationships. Uh, the winning's nice, the rings and all that, uh, they're okay, but the relationships will never be replaced, and the memories will never be replaced of uh, uh, the, the people I've worked with, uh, the people I've known, and the things that they that we've done together so it's been a lot of fun and there he is the inflappable the steady the solid coach osborne i love yeah. the quote we won 13 
and that's all we've played. That's right, and, and certainly I, I think they deserve to be number one. Um, they, it was a great showing. Certainly, of course, my opinion doesn't really matter that much. Well, but, uh, uh, certainly a great game, and I uh, wish uh, the luck, all the luck to them. Well, the, 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 the AP poll's going to be out in just a couple hours, so we'll yeah. see how everyone votes in the meantime. Okay, no time to waste. Let's go back to Miami with Scott Kilberry and Tommy Frazier standing by with offensive tackle Eric Anderson. Fellas? That's right, Eric Anderson. He is a senior. That means it's not only T.O.'s last game, but it's also this big guy's last name, kind of mixed emotions. Oh, definitely. You know, you know, not only Coach Osborne's last game, but, you know, 20 of my greatest friends, you know, it was our last game, too. It's last time we get to put on the red and white. You know, so it was, you know, a pretty tough game, you know, just for it to be over. Well, for you, I mean, what a way to go out both for Osborne and yourself. You guys had a lot of fun in the second half. Oh, definitely. You couldn't have scripted a better ending to that game. And, you know, we, we, you know, really wore down their defense in the second half and, you know, just took control of the ball game. Yeah, thank you for talking about wearing down the defense. Um, the first half looked like Tennessee pretty much was fired up and they were determined to stop the running game. What did Coach Osborne and Coach Chipper do differently in the second half? I think we, we just really simplified the offense. You know, we went to a lot more dives and, you know, isolation plays right up the middle where it was just man-on-man -man blocking. You know, we just simplified it, and, you know, they got extremely tired in the third quarter, and we just, you know, ended up wearing them down, you know, incredibly bad. I mean, we were talking here earlier about you already have a two championships with a chance to win the third one in four years. You know, I'm kind of jealous, but <laughs> how, do, how, how do you think the voters should vote? Well, I think, you know, looking at the score, you know, what we did, you know, if Tennessee's, you know, the number three team in the nation and we beat them by, you know, 20, 30 points, you know, I, you know, I have a hard time seeing them not vote us at least part of the national championship. Well, you heard it here. And I, there's no <laughs> doubt that you're going to vote for yourself, but I'm sure there's a lot of people at home and across the nation after today's performance and a convincing win are going to do just that. Well, we're going to have an opportunity to talk to even more of the players. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back after this break.